Welcome back. This is Dr. Hadi here and you are watching Medical Globe by Dr. Hadi. Today we will discuss the second part of the bioenergetics or biological oxidation. In today's topic we will discuss some of the most important terms like enthalpy, like free energy and most confusing word entropy. Of course, also some laws of thermodynamics like first law of thermodynamic and second law of thermodynamic. Beside all these, we will also discuss the use of the term free energy in biochemistry. So watch the lecture from beginning till the end. You will enjoy that. Come to the first law of thermodynamics. First law of thermodynamics says that the energy of the universe remain constant. It can neither be created nor destroyed. Whatever amount of energy in the universe, that energy will remain in that universe. It will not be decreased or increased. However, energy will be converted from one form into another form, but they will never be disappeared or uh, destroyed. And also, we will never be having new energy. For example, we have our universe. Let's suppose this is the universe and we are standing in that universe. <clears throat> suppose we have 100 joule of energy. And this is a kind of energy. For the convenience, we say energy A, right? So this energy is converted into another form of energy called energy B. That is 80 joule now. And then this energy B is converted into another form of energy which is called C and now we got 70 Joule. If a student just think here uh, that we got 70 Joule, it was 100 Joule where the remaining 30 Joule energy has gone. So he or she should not be worried about this. The lost energy is 30 Joule. Okay, from 100 to 80 Joule, some of the energy has been released or lost and that is 20 Joule of energy here when the energy was converting from one form to another form and that energy has gone. It has been used to do some useful work or it may be dissipated in the form of heat we cannot catch that energy it, it has gone it is not available to us it is not available to us but it is present in the universe we will not skip or neglect that energy whenever we write the total energy we must write this energy and now when the energy b was going to convert from b into c here the difference of 1870 is 10 joule so 10 Joule of energy is again released during this conversion from one form to another form and that 10 Joule of energy may be used in doing some work, yes it is utilized or it may be used uh, as a heat, it may be released as a heat, it may be dissipated. These two energy 20 and 30 Joule if we notice these two type uh, these two um, energies 20 joule and 10 joule the total amount will remain again 100 if you plus them sum up these 20 joule and 10 joule with 70 again we got 100 joule so inside our universe the energy can neither be created nor destroyed look at that it was 100 joule and now it is still 100 joule but don't worry a student may see that we have 70 joules don't, don't worry about this Yes, we have available energy to us is 70 Joule, but the remaining energy is still in our universe. It is something else that we cannot catch back that energy which has gone. And you know, a special word is used for such kind of energy that is not available to us to reuse that energy to do some useful work. That word is called dissipated. Dissipated. Or oh, dissipated. What do you use? What do you can pronounce dissipated or dissipated. Dissipated energy means that energy is still in our universe, but we cannot convert that energy into useful work. We cannot. Like, for example, if I am speaking, my words are 
uh, spreading all words wise spreading throughout this hall in this room and those people who can hear me some of the energy will be transferred but most of the sound energy will be dissipated in, in in that room but it will be still available we cannot catch it we cannot use it <clears throat> now come to the second law of thermodynamics second law of thermodynamics says that the entropy of the universe is increasing and we will be able to understand this until and unless we understand the word entropy so <clears throat> come to the word entropy what is entropy uh, entropy means the measure of disorderness is a kind of definition that i saw in that book but most of students will be confused still the definition is the 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 measure of the measure of disorderness disorder disorderness in a system so this is the definition measure of disorderness according to this definition the idea is here let's suppose we have some balls or some kind of a, a billiard balls whatever we have and we 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 placed all these balls in in a such a good order perfect order right and by by pushing them by slight disturbance if that diagram become like this and here a slight order is still there but the original order has been lost so a little bit disorderness has been created here and here we use the word entropy is produced that is called gain entropy whenever we use the word entropy this means the system has gone from the ordered state to the disordered state and if you see that diagram become like this in the future means this is more disorder as compared to this one so here we will say that the entropy is maximum so the disorderness in a system is called the entropy and remember entropy of the universe is increasing what does it mean that that orderness in the universe is going to towards the side of disorderness and most of students get confused how the order is in the universe i will explain this order in terms of energy you will enjoy that word that idea if we use the word energy rather than order the more ordered state will be called as more energy here right more energy is available here because we have uh, we did some work on this we provided some of the energy in this when this order is disturbed some of the energy that was available in that order state will be lost some of the energy will be lost so the energy which is lost the energy which is lost we called entropy has gained and here the further disorderness came we say more energy has been losted our universe is slowly and gradually moving towards a condition where the energy will be no more available to do work in our universe we are performing we can see a lot of works in different forms are being doing and all these work need energy according to the science one day our universe will be towards a maximum entropy means there will be no energy available to do work remember the energy will not escape from the universe the energy will be inside the universe but it will be in a form that will not be used by us to do some useful work this condition of lack of useful energy is also called entropy so the science says right that our whole universe is slowly going moving towards that disordered state as a constant fact that will happen 
uh, one more idea of that uh, entropy is here let, let, let's suppose we have a reaction because we are study uh, we are in biochemistry so we cannot go out of this subject so in biochemistry we we can see a lot of chemical reaction as you saw in my previous lecture that there was chemical reactions are there inside the body inside every living body inside every living cell there are chemical reactions. so we will use that word of entropy with respect to the chemical reaction look at this a chemical reaction where uh, this is reactor and product 100 joule and 30 joule of energy this is 100 joule and 30 joule of energy is available with the product after the completion of the reaction we say that in this uh, regard uh, what is the difference of 130 that is that is 70 joule so 70 joule of energy has been that is released well if the difference is that and now we, we got this 70 joule here again this 70 joule and the product is still it 30 joule energy when this reaction is completed again how much energy is expected to release to do some useful work is the difference of 30 and 70 is 40 so here 40 joule of energy will be released and it will do some work still we can see look at that in the beginning or with the passage of time in the first time zero time zero we had a lot of energy 70 joule energy it was available to do work and slowly and slowly that energy difference is going to decrease from 70 joule to 40 joule and and now the the difference that is again the same direction where we have 40 joule and 30 joule now this time how much energy will be released the difference of 40 and 30 joule is a 10 joule so now only 10 joule of energy will be available to us to do some work and one day sometime both the energy will be same the difference will be zero and here no energy will be released to do some useful work this condition is also called as entropy so in our world most of the reactions are going towards the increasing entropy side increasing entropy side means we are consuming the useful energy into work and then this energy is not available to us again and then neither we have such kind of a system to catch that energy back so that we can use it again and again it is not possible so this reaction shows that how the energy is slowly uh, escaping from the from the useful work and a time will come that we do not have the useful energy this condition is also called as entropy if the entropy is maximized in our universe there will be no work there will be no engine to start with there will be no wheel to rotate to move the car or the vehicle in forward direction nothing will be there right entropy is written as s entropy is written as s and change of entropy is written as delta s delta s means change of entropy why we write it because if a reaction the, this is reactant side and this is product side in the beginning the entropy is something else and at the end of the reaction we have to compare the entropy of these two so that is why we use the word delta s change in entropy because there is entropy in the initial stage and there is entropy in the in the last in the, at the end stage at the final stage so we will compare these two final stage and initial stage that is why we use the word change in entropy that word delta is always uh, show us that delta always tell us the change in something so delta s change in entropy delta p change in pressure delta t change in temperature so we will use that delta s usually delta s positive means delta s positive mean that the system is wasting its energy the system is moving towards the disorderness positive means the system is moving towards towards disorderness positive means like this and delta s negative negative entropy means the positive this that the system is moving towards the order towards the useful energy side in real life we will always encounter 
positive delta s because a, a, our universe is going towards the increasing entropy and we call it positive entropy. So that was uh, the, the second law of thermodynamic that says that the entropy that the entropy of the universe is increasing and that is all we explained. Now enthalpy. What is enthalpy and enthalpy change? Enthalpy is the um, amount of heat available or in a reaction let's suppose we have again a reaction here let's suppose we have a reaction here a and that is reactants reactants are going to convert into products the reactants maybe let's suppose water uh, or, or it is carbon dioxide and H2O, let's suppose, and we got a glucose C6H12O6, right? So it is a kind of reaction where carbon dioxide in water is going to convert into C6H12O6 glucose. There must be some bonds in that carbon dioxide bond, CO2, right? carbon attached with one oxygen and this carbon attached with another oxygen so here two bonds whenever there is a bond there is heat there is energy so the enthalpy one definition of enthalpy is the heat content this is a chemical reaction the amount of heat that is available to us in that reaction is called as the enthalpy and usually that heat which is released during the reaction or absorbed during the reaction that heat is called as the enthalpy and because we have the heat in the beginning and at the end so we use change in enthalpy rather than single word enthalpy now the, the, where the heat will come we would we were using the word energy and for enthalpy we are going to use the word heat only heat represents here the number of bonds and then its nature their nature look at that there are two bonds and uh, two bonds you will find in, in that wa water molecule so the total number of bonds at the reactant side and the total number of bonds at the product side tell us the enthalpy and these are of course a, a source of energy a source of heat whenever a bond is to be broken heat must be released heat must be given and released accordingly when the bond is formed or when the bond is released bond formation and release is always accompanied with the release of energy and the absorption of energy so we can also use that word heat now <clears throat> here is the reaction where the reactant is converted into product now let's suppose let's suppose in that in this reaction if the heat is released if the heat is released this of course this heat is our enthalpy and that released heat will be called as negative enthalpy negative enthalpy why i am using with the, this word let's suppose the heat content of the reactant is 50 joule let's suppose because the energy of the heat is also joule uh, the unit of heat is also joule and the unit of energy is also joule both heat and energy has the same unit joule so 50 joule of heat and here product has uh, 10 joule of heat now let's suppose some of the heat is released and the difference of these two, the difference of these two, 50 joule minus 10 joule is called change in enthalpy. And you just take that difference, is that is 40. So delta H is equal to 40 joule. So 40 joule of heat will be released. And now one question more, that is it really necessary for every reaction that heat must be released? No there are some reactions where the heat is released and that heat which is released will be given a negative sign so we will write it as a negative sign minus 40 joule and sometime if 
the, the reactant side has 10 joule energy and the product side has 50 joule of energy uh, we can also say that the product has more heat as compared to the reactants in this in this situation in this condition it is not possible for a heat to be released if the product has more heat it is for sure one big indication for us that some some sort of energy has came from outside some sort of heat has come from outside so here we will use the word like this that heat is absorbed in in the reaction why because the reactant has 10 joule and the product is 50 joule now how much energy is absorbed now the question is that again 50 joule minus 10 joule is equal to 40 joule so this time 40 joule of energy is absorbed so we will just write a positive sign with it so a heat may be released from a reaction or absorbed in a reaction. It depends upon the, the, the nature of the reaction. Some of the reactions release energy, other reactions absorb energy. So accordingly, we will give them the sign of positive sign and negative sign. That was all about the enthalpy. And, and one thing more, use the word spontaneous reaction. Spontaneous reactions are those reactions which are occurring by themselves, by itself, by themselves. Those reactions, always remember that the spontaneous reaction are occurring or happening by the release of the energy, by the release of the heat. If a reaction releases heat or energy, that reaction will be spontaneous. And if the reaction is not able to release energy, that will never be spontaneous. This kind of energy needs some energy from outside. So that energy from outside will be then non-spontaneous. So now let, let come to the ne next word, which, which is free energy. Free energy is, the definition of free energy is energy available, energy available to do useful work. Now this is more good word. More uh, you love, you will, you would love that concept here of the free energy. That was a scientist called Gibbs who discovered that term, and he also gave the symbol G, free energy delta G. And let's suppose we have a reaction A to B. Now this is going. This is the reactant side and product side. The, in, in this reaction the energy which is released the energy which is released that energy will be available to do some work and whatever what amount of energy released of course th this energy will do some work that energy which is released is called as the free energy and it is just like the uh, enthalpy uh, uh, where in during the reaction heat is released but here the heat will be called as energy that energy which is released to do some work if that energy is available to do work we will call it free energy otherwise it will be only called as a heat so free energy is actually this term and free energy is always associated with a chemical reaction the free energy delta g may be positive or it may be negative both are possible Positive free energy means that the reaction is not happening by itself. The reaction is not spontaneous, means energy is coming from outside. If the energy is coming from outside, then that energy which is absorbed will be also called as free energy, but we will give them a positive sign. And if it is released, we will give them a negative sign. Science says that all spontaneous reaction, all spontaneous reaction, thousands or thousands of thousands of reactions which are spontaneous, each and every spontaneous reaction will always release energy. Means every spontaneous reaction, here I am going to write every spontaneous reaction, every spontaneous reaction has, has delta G negative value right so we must remember this word delta g 
with negative value. Now we have three basic parameters. One is free energy, the other one is enthalpy, and the third one is uh, the entropy. These three are linked with one another by, uh, by an equation, and that equation is That equation is delta G change in free energy is equal to delta H minus temperature into delta S. Temperature multiplied by entropy change. For every spontaneous reaction, for every spontaneous reaction, you know very well that the heat will be released. Enthalpy is always negative. So A delta G is equal to here we got a negative, something negative, right? Something negative here we got because for spontaneous reaction, the heat is released. So enthalpy is given a negative sign. And then we have another negative sign, temperature. Delta S, delta S is always positive, always positive in this regard. When the, when the energy is released from a system, we say that the entropy is positive. So that temperature, which is in front of these two, if the whole number is positive, Okay, the whole number is positive because delta S is positive, temperature is always, uh, always positive number. So in, in front of these two, we have a negative number. So this is negative number. Already we enthalpy is also negative number. So we got two negative number. The combination of these two negative numbers will make the delta G a negative number. So delta G will always be uh, a negative will always be having a negative value for spontaneous reactions that is a point that we must remember for a spontaneous reaction and and then and the the unit of uh, free energy is joule per mole and heat is again joule per mole but the entropies he, uh, in unit is joule per mole and Kelvin, right? So this is the unit of these three parameters. And we got also the relationship between these three parameters. Now come to the most important next topic is the, the living body, entropy of the living body. A, the living body is made of cell, right? The, we, we were one single cell and then our body becomes many cells and then we become a human, a complete organism. Can you just tell me one thing? Is this, that system is going towards disorder side or toward the order side? Uh, Every student will say that system which we call it growth right or we call it cell division yes growth is always going towards ordered side means means that in this situation the entropy is not increasing like in our universe but in case of living body the living body is doing the reverse of what we saw in the second law of thermodynamics but still it obeys the second law of thermodynamics it is how the universe is going towards the positive entropy the universe is going towards the disorderness but the living body is going toward the orderness and a student must think why why it is going to uh, towards uh, an ordered side why it is going toward the negative entropy the reason for all this is that the living organisms are inside their environment they are inside the environment and that environment contain food right 
nutrients and these food and nutrients contain energy we get energy from the environment yes this is the energy we got from the environment and you know that the energy we got the energy we use to get the ordered state comes from the free energy and that free energy comes from the food and the nutrients all those food we take and the nutrients we have all these contain free energy so it is not possible to get ordered state without uh, without energy it is not possible we must get some of the, some energy and with the help of this energy we'll get order so it is it is uh, it is now clear that the order a living body attain is come from the free energy and that free energy got get from the food and nutrients we take and all the energy all the energy that was been taken and used to get that order state will be given back when the living organisms die or during lifetime these living organism will release this energy back they will release that energy back in the form of heat during the lifetime we are releasing some of the energy as a heat from the body and that energy in the form of heat will be dissipated in the environment and the remaining energy will be in the form of entropy yes some of the energy will be uh, dissipated it will not be available again to us that will be in the form of entropy and some of the energy will be used to do a lot of work because in the lifetime we are doing a lot of works so some of the energy that we got from the uh, from the environment will be used to do useful work so again the energy is constant whatever energy we got from the environment it that energy is utilized in the human body to get growth and cell division and then the, the energy it will not be destroyed that energy will be given back to the to the universe to the environment and hence once again we saw that it is the first law of thermodynamics where the energy is neither created nor destroyed now the last but not the least is heat flow is not a source of energy heat flow <clears throat> come to an engine in an engine if we see that we have two parts one part is at uh, at, at high temperature let's suppose 100 joule high temperature and other part is a 20 joule low temperature and heat always flow from the high temperature region towards the low temperature region whenever we have a high temperature region and a low temperature region there is a difference of temperature the heat will start to flow from one part to another part that heat flow that heat which which flows this will be available in the form of work and with the help of this in the heat we will do some work in, in engine inside car engine but inside the living body we cannot use this this sort of system to get energy our body our body's temperature is almost uniform so it is not possible that heat pass through our body and from one uh, hot region and the heat flows to a cold region and then we got energy and we do and we utilize that energy into work no it is not possible in our body we have free energy we have free energy in our body there is no concept of heat flow from a high temperature towards a low temperature but in our body we got the source of energy is the free energy how we get that inside our body we have food nutrients in the form of glucose amino acid different nutrients are the inside, inside our body these nutrients are oxidized broken down it through different metabolic reactions and during these breakdown of the food the energy is released that energy is called as free energy and our body use this free energy to do work to watch things to play 
and to do a lot of activities but not this one and the last thing the last thing just i hope you will be watching this delta g is just a, a, a free energy and then in our book textbook we have delta g naught this is this means standard standard free energy that is standard free free energy what does it mean by this uh, the, the, the chemical reaction can be ha can be happen at any condition at any environment at any temperature in, in, in at any amount yes but if we make the if we make specific conditions a specific some of the reactions are carried under specific conditions like the concentration of the reactants and products must be one mole the temperature must be 298 kelvin or 25 degrees centigrade the pressure must be 1 atm so if we specify conditions and then we uh, then we start a chemical reaction the free energy which is studied in these condition will be called as standard free energy we will put just a, a, a it's kind of is not over, over the top of the g and inside the textbook one more word is there delta g not and there is a slight prime is there slight prime is there why is this prime this is because in our body the reaction can be happen inside body a reaction which is taking place inside the body may take place outside the body as well outside the body the condition may be specified like this but the ph will be zero outside the body inside our body most of the physiological ph the conditions are at ph 7 8 ph is equal to 7 so if we change our parameter from the ph 0 to ph 7 then we will change that standard free energy from not to a prime if the ph is 0 this is a term which is used in in, in physical science and chemical science but inside the living body the ph has to be made at 7 so we will convert that g naught into g prime so the three types of g i hope you understood uh, that is enough for today we will see you in the next part of this in that chapter thank you bye bye